I'm just going to uh, show you exactly what draft angles are, why we need them, what happens if you don't put them on there, uh, how much you need. Um, let's get into it. So right now you're looking at a Lego block, and this is not drafted. And if we want to see it in an exaggerated draft form, that's what it would look like. This has got six degrees of draft applied to the outside and the inside walls. So, what is the purpose of draft angles? Um, it's just so that a part can be ejected from a mould easily. So, this is what the mould might look like, the, the insert blocks of the mould anyway. So if you're, if you're designing something to be injection molded, you need draft angles, this is relevant to you. Um, so what actually happens, what does it look like when it injects from the mold? Um, so this is where the plastic comes in and it fills up the mold and it cools down. It opens, the injection pins push out the part, so I'll show you that in motion. Replay. Okay, so there's, there's two things happening here. Um, so you're looking at it in its undrafted form, and what's happening is when this mold opens, these walls are scratching each other because it's got no, no draft angle. They scratch, but there's a second thing happening, and that's the vacuum effects. So in this internal area where there's just airspace, there's, there's no area for the air to escape. So as the mold opens, there's like a suction force happening on these outer walls of the part. Let me tell you what would happen to the part if it was undrafted, the walls scratched like we saw, and the vacuum uh, suck too much on the part. Um, scratch marks would look something like this, and the, the vacuum force and the ejection force from the ejector pins might end up either the pins will push too deep into the part because uh, there's too much force required to push them off. So that's kind of just like a, a local deformation from ejection pins. But the case where the whole part deforms because of the ejection force, it might look something a little bit like what you're about to see in a second. Yeah, that's what you might see. So what would, if we, if we replayed that mold opening, uh, but in its drafted form, what might that look like? Um, so if we just look at it in our simple mold here, just this, and I will start to open the mold like what we saw before. And so what can you notice here? There's, there's a gap. It's just how it happens when you pull a pyramid shape off another pyramid shape. The, the walls don't scrape just as it opens, which relieves the friction. And that suction force that I was just talking about earlier no longer applies because the air can escape out of these gaps that are naturally created as a tapered mold, a, a drafted part is demolded. Um, so that's how draft angles solve the scratching and the deformation problem uh, and of course by proxy uh, make it easy to eject. Um, so if you're looking at this video because you want to know in your own circumstance how much draft you need, uh, let's maybe talk a bit about that. So the general rule of thumb, the first one, is have one degree of draft, maybe 0 0.5, but nothing less than that in basically every scenario. 
And the second rule of thumb is a bit more refined, so it gives you an indication as to allowable drafts. So let's say that we have three Lego pieces and the first one is 25 mil tall, the second is 50 mil tall, the third is 75. You want to add one degree of draft every extra 25 millimeters. So the first is 25 mil deep and you need one degree of draft. The second 50, you need two degree of draft. The third 75, three, and the fourth would be 100 mil and it would need four degrees of draft. So the height or the depth of the part is relevant to the allowable draft. So that is the general rule of thumb for that. Um, so there's one other thing which is quite crucial, which you may be wondering. Um, if we have a part, do the inside and outside walls uh, have to be drafted the same? And why is it that why is it that Lego blocks are totally rectangular like what we're seeing now? If what, if everything that I'm saying is true, then why why do Lego blocks have zero degree draft on their outside walls? The answer is um, the outside walls and the inside walls have slightly different rules for each other. The outside walls you can get away with zero degree draft, and most of the time you want that for aesthetic purposes. The inside, however, you are always really going to need uh, even just a tiny a bit of draft, 0 0.5 degrees, for example. Um, so if we look at the Lego block in its real drafted form, draft angle on the inside is 0 0.5 degrees and the draft angle on the outside is 0 degrees. There is no draft angle. You literally can't even see it. It's so slight. Um, so that's probably why you can't actually see draft angles a lot in injection model products that you that you own um, because the outside walls are not drafted and if they are drafted it's so slight you can't even see it anyway and the inside walls are always going to be drafted but why is it that the outside walls can be zero degree draft and the inside can't? Um, so the reason that is so when a part is molded, the plastic comes in, it cools, and it shrinks because plastic shrinks as it cools all the time, no matter what. So, um, what you might see in a kind of exaggerated form is this in its, its shrunk form. So, the thing with plastic when it shrinks is it shrinks towards its center of mass, which is kind of where my cursor is now. It kind of shrinks inwards in, in on itself because the uh, plastic in the center cools slower than the plastic on the outside. So, um, so it shrinks inwards. So it doesn't shrink towards this cavity block, this, this block on the top. It, sh it shrinks towards the core block, the core blocks at the bottom here. Um, so it actually separates, the walls actually separate a tiny bit. This is exaggerated for the purpose of this video. But you know this gap might in real life this gap might be something as small as 0 0.1 millimeter. <clears throat> but the point is is that that does relieve friction between this uh, the part the part surface and the mold surface here. It is making it easier for us to eject from the mold with concern to these outside walls. But these inside walls have a far more intimate contact with the plastic as it's shrunken in the direction of the core block and onto it. So these, um, in Lego's case, I'm also quite certain, but not guaranteeing you that the insides are 0 0.5 degree drafted. Um, and that, in their case, is adequate draft to get it off there. They have a couple tools at their disposal, so they might, not might, I've seen pictures, so I know their mold surfaces are highly polished. Um, so this surface and this surface, the core block surface and the cavity block surface, 
if they're very, very shiny, very highly polished, then that helps the part eject from the mold easier. So, yeah, hopefully that explains draft angles as thoroughly as one might need. Um, hopefully it will make sense. Um, but yeah, if you're if you're designing an injection molded part and you need some advice, yeah, get, get in contact anytime at uh, info at 3 dcadesignservicescouk Alright guys, cheers.